Pray the Lord, brethren. Pray the Lord indeed, and we say amen. We thank God for finding God, and we shall continue priding ourselves with it. The personality that we share about this time is Joseph. Joseph, one of the sons of the man called Jacob. And something that I want to begin with is to mention that every Hebrew name has a meaning. And the meaning of Joseph, in Hebrew you pronounce Yosef, and Yosef means Jehovah shall add, Jehovah shall increase. I enjoy reading about Hebrew names, Hebrew personalities, because every name that is has a name, has a meaning, and Yosef means Jehovah shall add, Jehovah shall increase. And if you're interested to discover more and make an application in your life, yes, Yosef, Jehovah shall increase. And that is our desire as believers in the God, that God will increase us, that God will multiply us, that God shall expand us. And this is what, what is our desire. So Joseph is a young person that we talk about. And he did endure despite the situations that he faced. I have already mentioned that Joseph was one of the sons of, Joseph, of Jacob. And Jacob had 12 sons. And each of those sons came from different wives. Now, our interest here is the mother of Joseph, and she was called Rachel. Rachel was one of the wives of Jacob, and the Bible talks about her as most favored, most loved woman. Now, most loved woman, well, situations that were, that Rachel didn't produce as quickly as her sister, Leah. And so these children that came to Jacob in old age, Joseph was one of them. And so she was, he was conceived in old age. And remember, Rachel had two sons. The son that we're talking about is Joseph, and the other son that came through Rachel was Benjamin, and whom people called Benjamin. But in Hebrew, it said Benjamin, and uh, he's, maybe we shall find time and talk about him as well. Now, Joseph was favored by his father, and he was blessed by God. Now, there are some fascinating facts about Joseph that I want to share with us. And the chapters in the Bible that we read about Joseph are chapters, chapter 37. His chapters, Genesis chapter 37 to chapter 50. They all talk about the man, Joseph. And of course, there are some other events that happened there, but Joseph was the, the person. And so he provides for us lessons. Joseph gives us lessons for all categories of people, young people draw lessons from Joseph. Young adults draw lessons from Joseph. Middle-aged call them, and then the adult adults also have lessons from Joseph. Because actually he cuts across, and these are the things that I want us to share, because they have to impact us. Why we're doing these personalities is for their impact. Now, if there was anything negative that they did, maybe big lessons, so actually we grow up. If there is anything that was positive, yes, we say hallelujah, and we move along with them. Now, Joseph's story is a family drama. And if you belong to the family, this is another this is a story. It's full of emotions. You see brothers and sisters, and especially if you are stepbrothers, you are stepsisters, this is a story. And as a family relations, we learn from Joseph's story, things that can, can help us. Now, because of time, we cannot go into deeper details, but here are a few things that fascinated me that I want to bring forward to you, that God, when God plans something, it comes to fulfillment. So we have God's plans, number one, God's plans, God's dreams in your life. Sometimes they can bring discomfort to some other people. And we know that if you find people actually getting discomforted by some of the pronouncements that are made and they are favorable and they are favoring you. Some other people will not be happy, however close they are. So Joseph might not have been known to many, many people, uh, but the dreams that he had, that God brought to Joseph, they made everyone uncomfortable. 
Sometimes there are things actually that come our way and they make other people uncomfortable, especially things that concern our future. When the future is brighter, when things are, when they bring prosperity and nice times are ahead, sometimes people become envious, people become jealousy. And this is what happened to this young man, Joseph, and we know the story. First, his brothers, in Genesis chapter 37, verse 8, they asked him when he had told them his dreams, the dream of when they were harvesting and his sheaf standing up and their sheaths came and bowed before, I mean, they were bowing before. He said, you mean that we need to rule over us? Will you actually rule over us? Are you above us? And so they hated him. They hated Joseph because he, because of the dream that he had. But the dream was pointing to the future. And sometimes these things happen. So this is something that I wanted us to, to share about and learn something from them. And not even his father was also not pleased, his father Jacob, because in Genesis chapter 37, verse 10 to 11, his father asked, will your mother and I and your brothers bow before you? But his father kept these things in his mind, that when he said that, he said that the moon and the stars all came and lined up in the presence and bowed before me. So Joseph showed us some something here that what God has in store for you, whatever the, the response, whatever the reaction, it will come to be fulfilled. I said something that I pick from here. Other people's emotions can't change God's plan for your life. His brother's emotions would have changed his future. His father's Emotions could have changed God's plan, but they never changed it. So remain focused. Remain focused on God. Remain faithful. People may be envious. People may be jealous. People may be do anything, but their emotions can't change God's plan for your life. That's point number one. Point number two, we also say that nothing can change your plan, the, the plan for your life. And this is something that the brothers could have changed it and things like that. So whatever others think, whatever others do, remember Joseph's life, they did everything they could, you know, they, they picked him, they threw him in the hall, I mean, the, in, the, in the ditch somewhere, and God's plan was with him there. The Ishmaelites came, they sold him. Even when he was sold, it remained evident that even when he was sold to Potiphar's house, even there, God's plan remained intact. Even while he was accused falsely there, God's plan remained intact. So my brother, there may be delay. But I want to say delay is not denial. People may have their emotions. People may have their, you know, whatever it is. They may have their thoughts. They might do a, B, C, D to make it zigzag. But even when it is taking long, it will come. So God is planned for you, remains standing on, and it only remains upon you to remain faithful, to remain focused to the plan that God has for you. It's only a delay, but it's not in denial. So there are so many things that happened in Joseph's life. It took longer, but it came to pass. Point number three, in hard times, always watch for how God shows up himself. And this one I learned by myself. Just keep watching that God shows up himself in whatever situation that was. I've already mentioned it a bit. Joseph, God is, it never deviated God's plan. Whether it was in Potiphar's house, it remained there. So just remain watchful. Keep watching. Whether in prison, he was in prison, accused and thrown there, he remained watchful. So God never left Joseph and in this episode, we are, do, we are doing something, finding God. But also remember that God's plan for us remains intact. He never leaves us. It is us actually who deviate. It is us who, us who fall. It is us who disappear. But God never disappears in our lives. He keeps watching and following us and pulling us up. Even in prison, he will be there with you. Even in the pit, even in the agonies, even in the difficulty, even in the poverty, even in the sickness, even in the death. God will keep along with you. And so never, God never left Joseph and he'll never leave you. God will always be there to orchestrate events. He will change them 
And this is my belief. And the reason why I'm talking about Joseph is because actually all of us look to the future. You look to the future. I look to the future. My children look to the future. My wife looks to the future. Everyone else looks to the future. Even you, however old, but you look to the future. But God's plan remains intact. Just remain watchful. Point number four, integrity and obedience. Very, very important. Stands out. Remember, Joseph remained a person of integrity. He was always, you know, he beat the lies of the people. Now, there are people who are always there to smear others with the mud, lies. There are people who are always smearing and trying to, you know, to confuse, to change God's plan, but it will never be. Now, for you, remain a person of integrity. Because in Genesis chapter 30, 39, verse 9 to 10, we find, we see it there, that actually it was Joseph remained committed to God. Even when he was accused falsely, let it be falsehood. But remain watchful, remain obedient to God, remain a person of integrity. Another thing that I want to mention as I wind up is, even if you are the one called, there will always be a test. Joseph didn't ascend to the position up there without being tested. And it was not overnight, but it was a series of tests, a series of checks. And God desires certain, certain things to take longer that you may reach there. It's only being focused, like I've already said, being watchful. And he continued doing his work exceptionally well. Now you continue doing your work exceptionally well. Continue working. Give your best in whichever situation. I learn this and I pray that God enables me to continue working and working soundly and working with integrity. So whatever comes, remain a person that is knowing that your tests are all around, temptations are all around. Be yourself and remain focused and God is will will be accomplished and do everything with excellence do well people may appreciate even if they don't appreciate god will appreciate you and it is my desire to keep working and working according to god's will so but when the time comes whenever the right time comes listen to me god will present you with an opportunity to move into your blessing hallelujah you'll move into your blessing when the opportunity time comes when the real time comes you'll move into your blessing is it the wife that you want to marry is it the house that you want to build is it the job that you want to enter there is it whatever it is whatever situation you'll enter into your blessing just remain watchful just try to work harder into the direction that is god's direction and in chapter 41 we see pharaoh telling joseph since god has made all these things known to you there is no one more discerning and more wise like you and so you shall be in charge of my palace remember pharaoh telling joseph and all my people are to submit to you when the time comes you'll be elevated there just remain a person of integrity now god knows your readiness for leadership god knows that you are able to handle that situation is it marriage is it a job is it property whatever it is God knows your readiness. And when Joseph was ready, he had it. And may God bless us that we shall be ready. I am praying that God will make me ready for the assignments that I have around me. If you are ready to become a father, you will be a father. Pray the Lord. If you are ready to be a wife, you will be a wife. If you are ready to be a, grand, a grandfather, you will be a grandfather. If you are ready for the job, you, if you are ready to be a manager, you will be a manager. If you are ready... The readiness that we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, God knows it, that you are ready now, you'll be able to handle someone's daughter. You are ready now, you'll be able to handle someone's son as a husband or as a wife or as a father, and these things will come. Your job will come. Your grandchildren will come. Your benefits will come. And may God bless us all. And so pay attention to others on your faith journey to greatness. Joseph shows us being um, attentive to others. Joseph was able to interpret other people's dreams. Now, don't stand in another person's dream. Interpret, help the person you get there. Joseph was actually interpreting for the cup bearer and he told him what would happen and indeed it happened. And then even in this other one, the baker, uh, whether it was death, but came to it came to be fulfilled anyway. But now, 
Don't stand in other people's dreams. Have yours and be able to help others and be attentive. Listen to people's, what people other people tell you. Be there, be available. It's a lesson that I picked to be available to listen to what other people are yearning for, what people want to hear. And as a church leader, I am asking God to be there, to pray with somebody, to read the Bible with somebody, to interpret something for somebody. There are people who come with their dreams. I ask God to give me the, 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 I mean the, the, the gift of discernment. Joseph was there to listen to these people's dreams, including Pharaoh's dream. And this is when his greatness came. And finally, trust God's process. Trust God's process. I am telling it to myself. I'm telling you. Trust God's process. And in Genesis chapter 50, verse 19 to 21, Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Told his brothers, don't be afraid. You intended it for harm, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is to be, what he's doing now. Now, Saving lives should be our purpose. Whether we have been hurt, whether we have been annoyed, whether we have been angered, whether we have been mistreated, but God, may God save other people through us. It's my prayer. May God save other people that are around me, my family, including those that intended bad for Joseph, the brothers, you know, wanting to kill him. But then a plan was hatched to sell him wherever he went. Even in the prison, when he was accused of falsely, it is then that actually God uplifted him. So Joseph gives us a story. Joseph gives us lessons that we need to learn that let us trust God's process. Trust God's process. I trust God's process. But all of us are on a journey. Let us move, but remain focused and continue finding God and God will continue on your side. And may God bless you and watch over you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.